determined by all of this. Thank you so much for joining me today. We are uh, going to work on the flock block. <laughs> I love that. But mainly, I'm going to work on pinning, and we're going to spend some time on color today, okay? But first of all, I want to say that um, I watched Dr. Fauci pitch the first pitch, and I'm so glad that he socially distanced, distanced himself from, from the um, home plate. <laughs> I'm just he's so happy. <laughs> and like my husband said, it's not like he's had time to go and practice, but apparently he did. <laughs> if you haven't seen it, it is worth Googling and taking a look-see at the whole thing. So th thank you, Dr. Fauci, for, for throwing that first pitch. So I don't know. Oh, I guess I'm going to start with this, okay? We're getting, when I, when we stream this thing, we are on five different platforms or places, okay? I think. Um, you can get me on my Facebook, my professional page. It's the one where I'm in front of a red background. You can get me on the Quilt Shows um, Facebook page. You can get me on Ricky's Facebook page. You can get me on YouTube. And you can get me on, if you go to thequiltshow.com, and scroll down on the main page, it, it says watch here. Big picture of Ricky and myself. So I'm on five different platforms, which means whatever platform you're watching from, I may miss a question or two or 10 or 20 or 30. So I want to drive you to the forum at thequiltshow.com. There, I cannot believe how many people are posting what they're working on, questions, the whole bit. So when I was talking to Barbara Black the other day, she really watches the forum quite closely, as well as Shepherds Are Block of the Month with people. She said, please remind people to go to the forum. If you have a question, just go there. Someone will answer it. And I'm popping in and out too, okay? So all you have to do to post in the forum is you must be a member, not a paid member, a member and the reason that and you have to be logged in okay and the reason that is oh my popping and the reason that is is so that if somebody gets in there and um and is naughty we have the ability to ban them so it's it's a it's a simple protection policy for all of us as far as this so along goes on my mystery quilt but it's a mystery to me you can start any time because on the front page of thequiltshow.com where it says playlist with Ricky and me, that same big icon I'm talking about, you can go back. And when we started this was this last Monday, which would that make that the 19th or something? I don't, yeah, I think that would be the 19th. Um, that started this whole thing. So please do come one, come all. And it should live there forever type thing. So yay on that. And then Barbara said, also remember you guys, there's, if you don't know about the quiltshow.com and the quality of shows that we provide to you every other week, a new one comes out and you don't have to watch it during that time frame. You can watch it whenever it's convenient to you. That, um, go watch a couple free shows. Check out who the quilt show is, okay? We want you, come one, come all. And I can't think of a better bargain on the internet for six months, six months, 1995. That's nothing. That's our COVID special. So as long as we're into this mishmash with COVID, take advantage because we're practically giving away the bank, okay? So on that happy note, now I have to go on a sad note. I received, I, I, I don't even know if it was on my Facebook. I, I don't even know what, but let me tell you the story. And I have some, well, I kind of have cliff notes. It's the whole thing. This quilt here is, uh, has been stolen and it is for, it was made for Lieutenant Colonel Cynthia Weedman, who serves as a chief, as chief nurse at Joint Base San Antonio Lackland. Well, she's about to go into retirement and this quilt was, um, her husband, Bill, a retired Air Force veteran, looked forward to a wonderful special presentation for Cynthia and it, 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 I mean, these people are people that are serving our country like you can't even believe. So what happened was 
uh, it, a bunch of cars were broken into at the Hampton Inn and Suites near JBSA Lockland and SeaWorld. And this is in, in San Antonio and the quilt was stolen. So, I mean, if this isn't heart wrenching, I don't know what is. If you guys see this quilt, uh, please get hold of me. We're also going to put it on in the Monday's newsletter. I mean, that is just wrong on 10,000 million levels. So I, I'm still getting some Sequoia quilts. Oh, also in the forum, people are posting their Sequoia quilts too. Guys are prolific. This is Heather's and look at how simple the two side flowers are, but they're so darned effective and look it's even bound and I believe she put in a flange yes she told me she put in a flange so you can see on the top she's got the green binding and then the lavender flange great job Heather and then let's see Denise let's see yours she says kind of wrinkly but that's okay Denise we'll take it and it looks as if you were working with the original 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 bundle uh, way back in the day that we sold at TQS of Editus Fabric because I see those birdies and I know that those birdies were in it. The sprays, I keep looking at those verticals, you guys, those sprays are absolutely exquisite. Thank you for sending that on to me. And then we have Louise's and she said that those flowers, boy, I hope I'm not screwing these up. Those flowers, she actually quote unquote cheated, cheated uh, like this cheated she used her uh, go dye to cut the flowers i think that's actually being incredibly smart to tell you the truth so before we get into color and all of that i want to show you my professional setup so you'll have some understanding of the obstacles as i teach you here we go there it is guys <laughs> there i am in the center row of the airplane you could see the camera on the left hand side center and then you come over to the computer and that's the one I'm talking to and then the one that's glued onto my machine I think the holders oh no there's a little red foam there too and I'm sewing around that when I'm showing you things so I'm telling you I'm telling you that's my professional studio right here right now for these Monday Wednesday Friday lives are you impressed mm-hmm so my girlfriend got the, the got the brassica the okay the brassica bundle all right the brassica bundle comes with hand dyes these are the ones that i'm pounding on you guys to pre-wash because they do run and then somebody else was asking well do i have to wash the uh the brassica the cabbages and i said whatever makes your heart feel good i mean it's definitely two different schools of thought, and I'm breaking into this package. Yes, I am, to talk about, okay? So this brassica, let me put on this camera right here so we can all look at this together. This brassica is very different from the original CAFE one that I'm using and this is a piece of this one, cactus flower. And this is one of the wildest colors of cactus flower. But these are very soft and, and toned down. Like take, for example, well, let's take this one. This is analogous on the color wheel next to each other. And so I could easily use, say, this one. I could use, let me untie this. I'm going to tie this back together. Somebody, somebody's going to be able to buy this. But I took it from the store based on what my friend said that I needed to do because this is different fabric. All right. So that's beautiful with that. I could go with a purple. Ooh, lovely. That's all that's in there. But let's say I wanted a little snap, crackle, pop. Let's look at Katie's color wheel. And I want triad split complement. Which do I want? Which do I want? This we actually sell in our quilt shop. Let's see. So let's say I'm working on double complement. As this here, this is the one I'm looking for. Analogous complement. I oh by the way, of course I marked all of mine and I spelled disc wrong in every single case. 
So let's take a look at this. Let's put, let's put it on the blue and purple that are kind of neighbors, right in there, okay? So what's across from it? Oh, it'd be nice if you could see it, right? So right in here is the blue and purple, which is going on right here. Let's say I wanted a snap, crackle, pop to that. So let's just pull out a yellow or let's pull out an orange for the third color because this piece of fabric is not giving me the clues right here. It's, it's just giving me that. So let's see how yellow looks. Absolutely luscious. Let's see how orange looks. Beautiful. I think I like the orange the best. But see, that's, that's how you work the wheel. That's how you work the wheel. Then I, um, then this one, oh, there was one color in here, and I was actually FaceTiming my girlfriend. It's actually, she's a retired teacher, and now she started quilting again, and we have our own private little quilting bee going on. So this, this color doesn't make my heart go zippity doo da. Look at that, it's beautiful. So in working with these colors, it's your chance, while the blocks are fairly simple, it's your chance to have a ball working with the color wheel. Okay, so uh, here's, where's the one that I wanna show you that I decided on? Okay, I went, I want, and I had it out ready to go, and then I had to pull it apart and screw that whole thing up. So here's analogous. Oh, this is, uh, oh, rats. But you can see because of my big luscious office, this is the one I'm looking for, this two, I think triad. I think triad, I'm not sure. Um, hmm, let me see. Oh, anyways, okay. So for the original, I'm discombobulated, you guys. For the original one uh, that I sewed, which now has walked away. <laughs> I think I need to do split screen so you can see how upset I am. Here we go. Let me see if I can do this. Oh, there we go. <laughs> um. Where's the original block? Oh, here it is, doy, okay. So this, if you look at it, is analogous. It's right in here, and I did pull the colors from this, okay? That's where I went. I've got my pink, and I've got the, or the orange in here too. Oh, wait, sorry. Okay, you guys are a very kind audience. Or if you're not kind, don't tell me about it. <laughs> because I know better than you. I'll, this is okay. So here you've got an orange in here. You've got a yellow here and you've got tons of pink. So that's how I pulled for this one, okay? But the example that I'm doing today, I decided not to use any of Cape's fa uh, fabrics as my guide. I decided to use the Katie's color wheel. So I've got a red and I've got a blue, a blue, and a green. That's the one I did. I know which one it is. I think it might be this one. Let's see, yes, 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 yes. So I started with the red because I knew I needed more red in my quilt. It's talking to me. And then I went and I pulled, I mean, they don't match exactly, but I would not have had the nerve to put this together without using this as my guide. Now any color, and the truth of it is, any color wheel will work for you, but this is just kind of a fun toy that I'm enjoying the heck out of. And you can get that at thequiltshow.com too in the store. Okay, oh yeah, one other thing people are asking about are solids. And I went out today, look at, I love spending your money. I went out today and I, we have maybe six packages of each of these. So if you want solids, take advantage of this. We do not have a million of them, and when they're gone, they're gone. Okay, can you use analogous and tertiary in different parts of the quilt? Oh, you can use everything in different parts of the quilt. 
what you do, and I know for a lot of you, this is kind of enough to make you wig out. I look at each little block as its unit, as its own little adorable unit. And then I know in the end that they will all go together because the base root is either from brassica or from cactus flower. They'll go together, it's going to work. So I, again, I know it's scary, but it's fun. And if you've never worked this way, it's just, you need to do it. In fact, I talked to another friend and she said she had to talk her sisters off a cliff because they aren't working, <laughs> they aren't used to working this way. And you know who you are. <laughs> so, so let's take a look at what we have going on here. I want to talk about the pattern first. So let's get back down here. Okay, it's flock on page 34. And here is the block right here. Let me line mine up so my flock is going in the right direction. Uh, maybe, I don't think it much matters. Other, uh, oh, other than, let's look at, other than these all march in the same direction, all right? When I, when I put it together, I thought I'd done it wrong. I thought that maybe the whites were all supposed to be facing in together, but according to this, it all marches in one direction, all right? The other thing is, is we're working with our um, half square triangles and I decided this time to also square them up. So what I do, because it's real easy for me to get confused. No, you're kidding me. I go with my purple pen and I circle the six inches, all right? And basically this block is just made of half square triangles. So when we're looking at, okay, let's look at number one or A, which is the outside big ones here. Let me point with scissors, not my big fat fingers. This is number A and number B, here and here, here and here. It tells you to cut at three and seven eighths. And I hope you guys have pens and pencils or whatever, because I would be taking notes. And then what I would do, rather than cut it for three and seven eighths, I'll go up to four. And I've actually marked this with my friction pen so that if I choose to go and erase it, I can and or I can take my iron and iron it away. It'll go away. And this purple will magically go away too because it's the disappearing ink pen. You got like 72 hours or something like that. But anyways, rather than cut it at three and seven eighths, I'm cutting it at four, all right? Then down here, it says number C and D, which are the little guys right here. It says to cut those triangles at uh, two and three eighths. So I'm gonna cut them, I'm gonna go up an eighth of an inch, I'm gonna cut them at two and a half, okay? And then rather than cut them and sew them, I'm going to do how we did yesterday and Monday, where I draw a line on each side, I cut the square, Draw a line like that, and then sew quarter of an inch, quarter of an inch on each side. And I didn't feel like you need to sit and watch that. So I redid, I, I already did that. So let's lay this block out for fun. Because to me, in this one, the lesson is in the pinning. So I'm gonna do this like this, like this, okay. Actually, I'm gonna do it on the gray board. This is here, and this is here. And then see how all the whites are marching in this direction? And what I need to do, I think I have to pull, oh, pull it more this way. What I need to do is, again, I, I left two to square up just in, just in case, all righty? So I'm gonna square these two up, so in case you're brand new, you can see it's a little big, because remember I cut an eighth of an inch bigger than what the instructions said. And I'm gonna take my little itty bitty rulers. These are great little rulers that we got with Quilter Select. And um, I never thought I would really use them. I never thought I'd get this fussy with my cutting, but I am. So the diagonal line is going right down the pieced unit, all right? Like this, and then go like this, 
and whoop, it didn't cut all the way. Uh-oh, well that's bad. Okay, when you do something like that, <laughs> rather than say crap, what you're gonna do is um, you're gonna pretend like fabric's there when you sew it to the next one. Actually, this is a good lesson, okay? So here's, I call that the language of quilting. No, truly, the language of quilting is can be more rugged than that, for sure. All right, so I'm going to trim it. And there. So, how did I know what to trim this to? Other than I just knew I had to take off an eighth of an inch. Well, this is a six inch finished block right here. So, if this is a six inch finished, I know that this is going to be a three inch unit. And this is going to be a three inch unit. Three plus three is six, right? And so half of three is one and a half, and then you add a half inch to it, and then you've got your two, and that's what I trimmed to. Simple math, I did flunk geometry, and I'm dead serious about that, but once you get all this in your mind, you're gonna be good to go. So what I'd like to do is now Get this out of the way and now put it down on here. Because this board is just too dang big. I think this is a really, really, really sharp looking quill or block. And again, I would not have trusted to put these colors together if I hadn't had Katie's little toy to play with. Now, another thing my girlfriend asked me was, what's triad, what's tertiary? And it's the same thing. I call it triangle. It's the triangle on the color wheel. Those always play up really nice. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is, we are gonna get into pinning on this. Let's talk about this top row. I do, I'm really getting hooked when I'm not lining up seams to just glue these suckers together rather than pin. If I'm lining up seams, then I'm going to pin. So let's go down here. And John seemed to get that stand to work without Velcro, but I appreciate you guys offering that idea. There we go. Again, I am watching right there. That's my lead in. And you could see when I pan how scratched up things get, but that's the price of doing business. No kidding, you guys. If you didn't see the Fauci thing, you got to go see it. It's so adorable. It's so adorable. And then John would play baseball in high school, and he said the thing that people don't realize is that, is that uh, pitching is a whole thing in itself. Okay, John's coming in with questions, I think. Just say it, will you, sweetheart? Oops. The camera seems to be frozen. It's not really It's showing. frozen? Uh-oh. It's showing on mine. Technical director. No, it's showing, but it's not moving. Oh, that's weird because it's moving on mine. Well, you know what? That's okay, you Can guys. I -plug it? Yeah, go ahead and replug it. Somebody, um, John's going to be calling this afternoon. She's having a hard time on the side. She goes, I need John. And I said, He'll call you. So she's going to walk it through. It's still frozen. Oh, love technology, hate it. Okay. Well, let me go back to me sewing then at least. Maybe let me do that. Yeah, frozen screen. Yeah, let's try this. Let me try this. It's frozen. So you can watch me. You keep me. I'm. I'm just gonna sew these things, and then I'm. Ah, that makes me crazy. John, we got to get another camera. Your phone is just giving me fits. Seriously. I mean, it's always that phone. And that's the most expensive phone you can have, that iPhone. Why do you think that is? Life. <laughs> Life is his answer. <laughs> so. All right. Try again. 
Yeah, it that sucker is frozen. Hmm. Ricky had the same problem yesterday. Now, I think he was in worse shape than me. Um, because at least I've got good internet. All right. Let me go over to here. Okay, so here's all my little guys right here. And what I'm going to do is, okay, and this is what I got in trouble before. I'm like, wait, okay, now how do I leave this thing out here? Okay. I'm going to, okay, in pressing these, I'm going to have to choose one side or another the way to press. All right? And so what I'm going to do is, again, lay it out. Oh, wait, I got to get it on this one. Oh, John, no, you took the wrong one off, babes. Please get this one back on. Now everything's freezing. There we go. Okay. We're good. We're good. We're good. Don't touch it. Don't touch it. <laughs> Don't touch it. <laughs> so, yeah. The red's all ma ma marching down like that. So what I'm going to do is I am going to turn this over. I'm going to press the top one. I'm going to I want to see these these two intersections right here. So I'm going to press this one this way and I'm going to press this one this way. I got a I saw somewhere that somebody was having problems that their that their move this this way. Their blocks are coming out a little too small. And my guess, if I were a betting woman, it's in either your seam allowance or your thread, okay? And so I love the Sally Collins trick where you go and you, hold on, I don't wanna talk. Let me get this right. That goes that way. This goes this way. Okay, where you cut two strips of fabric that are one and a quarter each sew them, you know, like four inches worth, sew them. And then what you do is you press it open and it, and it measures it two inches. If it doesn't, something's wrong and it needs to be fixed. I have found by putting my 80 weight in my uh, bobbin and my 60 weight on top, it has helped immensely. So there's some goodness going on here. Right here and right here, this goes in a quarter inch, so that's beautiful. And what I'm gonna do, oh, man, this bums me out that I can't show you this. I'm gonna come in the back and I'm gonna come right through the tip. I'm gonna come in the back right at the X part and then I'm gonna come right up here and the pin's coming out. I don't think you can really see it, but it is. And then I'm gonna go exactly into here, the point, pointy point right there. And I'm going to pinch in. My favorite pins on the earth are the extra fine glass head pins, regular length, not extra long. And then I'm gonna pin in like that and like this. Oh, if this camera's not working, I'm getting it out of the way. I can tell you that. Okay, so now let's take a look at this. You can, you can see that the pin is in their taunt. This is pinning right underneath and coming out, right underneath and coming out. I am going to, and I've demoed this in the past, so that's why I'm not too much freaking out. Uh, I'm going to leave this pin in. And again, if you want to just put a little dab of glue, a little dab will do ya, on the end. And then another little dab will do you there to kind of help things from separating. Okay, John, go, go make sure we're not getting questions, okay? And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go so, 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 so. And right before I get to this pin, I mean right before the needle would knock right into that pin to go down that hole, I take that needle out, all right? So here we go. You have to trust me on this. Trust me, trust me. Whoops, don't want that to get caught. And 
then I'm going to say a little prayer. Okay. <gasps> Ta-da! Woohoo! Yay! Yay! Now, I got another decision to make. I have six or more seams coming together. One, two, three, four, five, six. I might well decide to just press this open, okay? To alleviate that belly button. I mean, that's really bulky. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come down here, and when I press things open, I do it from the back side. Unlike when I press from one side to another, I do from the top side. You guys, a lot of this is redundant, and um, there I've glued it together, so I wanna work that apart. I'm gonna come apart. Is there, I, I'm gonna say a lot of these things over and over and over again. And the truth of it is, I say a lot of this to myself when I'm quilting. So once I pressed it open, I am gonna flip it on this side, give it a little tug, all the biases are sewn up. A lot of you are realizing you have one of these, okay? Which is super awesome cool goes like that and then let me how are we doing on time we're doing okay um well actually then what I'm gonna do I don't have to do the top because what you're gonna do here is you're gonna sew this and this together right this guy these guys together and then you're gonna sew this to this all right and this to this basically it's a four patch the only thing you want to be aware of here is that when you are sewing, that is, this is one of the hazards of gluing. I gotta go press that again. See how it's scrunched a little bit? I don't like that. It's all in the pressing, people. It is all in the pressing. Is that good? Yeah. So I'm gonna sew this to this. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pay so attention right there, because if I sew too far this way, I'm gonna cut that tip off. If I sew too far this way, it's gonna be floating. So what I typically do to, um, is I sew one hair, hair to towards the raw edge. Not a thread, a hair. And I do that because then when you press it, it does give just a little bit of um, room for when you press the fabric and you roll it over to one side or the other. You know what, somebody asked me about that the other day, what I meant, I didn't know what they are talking about, but now I know exactly what they're talking about. Remember you guys, the forum is a really good place to ask questions. And again, I'll be popping in and out. Drum roll, ta-da, okay. It is floating a little bit. That does not bother me in the slightest. Now the other thing is I probably will press it in this direction. So now I've allowed for the rollover and the reason I'm gonna press it in this direction is then when I go to sew this to this, I can see where, that, where I need to um, make my seams, seam line. So let's press it and see how good it came out. And again, then I don't have to sew the whole thing, right? Okay. Uh oh, here comes Sparrow. She came up the other day and fell down. She's getting so old, so old. So let's look at the back of this one. When I sewed the whole thing together, the last two rows, or the last row, I broke the thread up here, here and here and then I get this adorable little twirl that I just love. I probably will go in and trim off all those little tips. Now, let me show you something when I was making this original block. This was what came out when I was doing this. And you can see here, something is terribly wrong. Let's look at the lines. I wonder if that's even this side. Yeah, it is. Something is terribly, terribly wrong. It's skewing in like this. Because these blocks are so simple, if you can see that something is terribly wrong, just throw it away. Just start over, don't pick it out. It, it's just not worth it. So 
be very critical as you make each of your each step along the way be very very critical of your work and then it will come out really quite nicely so I love this little block I could see doing a whole quilt out of it and then someone the other day said well are you going to use the nautical one in there yeah I'm going to use everything I make in there do I use steam if there are no exposed bias edges I will consider steam when the block is done great question by the way when the block is completed and if there's no exposed bias edges I will use steam but remember this this happened the other day uh, my Olisa my expensive beautiful iron I hadn't cleaned it in a while and I hadn't used, used the steam in a while and I steamed and it just pooped out rust so so if you have I would all I would never just go steam on my quilt block until I know it that's not going to happen and I called up Kay Brooks and she said that's just what happens it gets rusty on the inside and I think you throw in vinegar or something like that so let me tell you um, my happy what uh, Jody says with the quilting I will call it my happy iron <laughs> that's funny okay so let me tell you what's gonna roll this weekend John and I are going to go away this weekend up to our cabin. We haven't been there since October. I am so excited. I've got somebody, a quilter, who's going to be staying at my house to take care of Sparrow. Mm -hmm. Or maybe she just wants to be in my sewing room. I don't know. But anyways, someone's going to be here taking, holding down the fort. But Monday, I will do a lesson. But what I'm going to do is that I've already taped it. I've taped it, but I will still come on live so we can answer questions, hang out, the only difference is, is that you will honestly see the demo from beginning to end because everything worked. So that's what's going on. I'm very, 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 very glad that um, you guys are with me. I so appreciate it. Help us spread the word. I cannot wait to see how these quilts come out. It's very exciting to me. It's very rewarding. And I know it's keeping a lot of us with our head in the right direction. So, hey guys, have a great weekend, and I'll see, I will see you Monday live, but the demo will be pre-taped, and it's, I forget what block we're doing. I'll let you know. It's a good one. I liked it. <laughs> see you later, guys. Bye-bye.